Alright, the also I've got this thing pretty much all set up. I was sort of um set up the uh voltage a little bit higher so I can get a bit more torque out of it. And um uh set up reverse. So um I was going through the functions try going through the functions and um finding the what it had, see what I um find uh, the program I could set into it. It must have um Change one accidentally by mistake. I didn't know, remember which one it was. So yeah, I turned reverse off. So after um, we can figure that, so I can get reverse back, and then um, turn the voltage up a bit, the intermediate voltage like I did in this one to give me some more torque. And that's right to go. Now this uh, actual motor, it works on this thing even though it's in Delta, uh, a star, not Delta. Interesting. Just gonna put it on here just for laughs, and sure enough, it worked. Let's give you a demonstration. It goes at 320 hertz. That's what the limit's set at, not 400. 320 hertz is good enough. That's screamingly fast on this thing. Now this one here doesn't have the um, network connectivity for PLC. You have to do it in that little uh, terminal junction in there to do it. As you can see. Therefore, this one here still smells a lot. This one here doesn't. This one here, the bit that burn you smell is pretty much worn off it, but this one here, whew, it still stinks. Now I think this is also sensorless vector control. This one is a lot better, more, this one is more professional, a lot more better made than this one. Now the Huan Yang is definitely a beginner's type of VFD. Why don't you figure how to set the bloody thing up? And go forward. Faster. Too fast, too quick. If I turn it up too quick, it'll slow back down. You're supposed to press this again, they'll go in reverse. You've got to reprogram it back into reverse. Go slowly or go faster. Yeah, if I could get that fit and fair enough, I said that's a deck going and it'd be nice. A bit of torque, but not enough. So I'll put this on there. Do you see? And I've got the voltage set high enough, it's too low. It's not so bad at that low end, it's just going to go faster. Oh, the torque's been out there. Okay, after we can figure this drive. Listen, here I got it set up pretty damn well. After lots and lots of stuff in there, and I have to fix that. I can't have wires crossing out like that either. Oh, look at that. Ooh, naughty. I've got a little uh, copper strand now for neutral touch of the active almost. I'm going to have to fix that. Then again, this is not a proper, um, proper industrial cord to use for this sort of thing. This is only a thick and uh, single-use soldering iron cord. I'm going to have to get some more of this um, orange cord and make one for this one. This is a lot higher quality than this one. So I'm going to have to uh, dig through my stash to see if I've got any more of that cord I can use. Lucky I've seen that, but uh, fix that. That would have ended badly. So the capacitors in there and the heat sink are probably a bad idea. It cooks them, and then it kills them prematurely. But with this one, they're a lot more um, in a better spot. They'll last longer. Slowly turn it up. Remember some air now. The bearing's not as noisy now. It's not getting warm. The front one's alright, the back one I'm worried about. I don't know, 15.2. Bit slow to respond. 
just going to ride everything Toyota instead of a Pepsi Yamada. That's kind of high quality and nice how it's got that. How much faster can they go? 121. 124. 131. Lighter. It's a bit unresponsive, but I'm not too worried about that. That's pretty fast. Well, 440 RPM later. It's never gone that fast, and it's 30, 40 odd year light. Stopping it. Yeah, look, oh, there you go. Now it's got to get reverse back. Got to have reverse, otherwise the system is useful. Because uh, the particular setup, I want something to spin backwards or forwards. So I want to, so I can spin the collector direction without switching the motor around. So I can just use it on the drive. For convenience. Once I um, figure out which function I've bloody changed, I'll put it back. I get the reverse program back into it. Yeah. It's definitely a more higher quality drive than this one. But I only bought this one because for a 4 kilowatt, is what, or 3 kilowatt is what I wanted, because I wanted something much bigger than what I actually needed, because I'm not as this size I'm going to be getting hold of. So that's why I got that one here. And for the price, it was good. I always go steep on the too big or overrated for what I need. This is a 2 horsepower drive. But for the, that's, it's a, that, was, that cost the same. I paid the same for that. I did with that one. And that's only half the power, but that's much better quality. That one. <laughs> that one. There you go, turn it down. Yeah, obviously no torque at the low end, see? That load is no torque. That one here has got heaps of torque at the low end. So you're going to have to um, study the book on this drive. I want to configure it to have heaps of torque that low. In other words, intermediate voltage you've got to raise, like with this one. It only had um, 13 volts at that frequency. That's why it had no torque. Now, I bumped it up to 50 volts at that set frequency, and it's got loads of torque now, all the way up to um, probably wherever I've got this set at, 200 hertz. So it's brilliant. See, the voltage is too low, that's why I've got no torque. You want to set the voltage a bit higher than that to get some use out of it. A bit higher. You see, it's not it stepped up too much. If we put an external pot on this thing, it'll be a lot smoother. So a bit bloody noisy. Anyway, that'll be enough for now. One thing I forgot to mention: how much power do I pull? Revving it like that, and not putting any load in the motor. On the nail load, yeah, that, what that, that two amps. It's more energy saving running on one of these. If I run that motor straight off the mains frequency, that motor pulls five amps. But if I can run it like this, on the nail load, it doesn't pull much at all. So these things are good for saving energy too. The main reason why companies and businesses use them. If I start putting load and it'll probably start pulling some power. It doesn't go up by much. It doesn't go up by much at all. Yeah, I need to turn the voltage up. I've got to figure to get more voltage into that motor. So that drive gives it its full power to run that motor at maximum torque, like I did with this one. I've also fixed my wiring up there, it's much better. Yeah, I've got to set this out with a potential motor next. Anyway, thanks for watching. Ah, yeah, rule number one. If you want to polish a motor pulley, don't stick a rag around it and leave cords hanging around. <laughs> oh, that was funny. Oh, man, look at that. 
There I was quick to hit that stop button. I'm gonna have to hook this thing up with an emergency stop button, I think. Ripped the bloody wire out of me bloody isolation transformer there. Damn. I have to put a new core in this isolation transformer. But this is pretty much ripped about three centimeters out of the plug top. I reinserted that and glued it. Oh well. New core for that one. I could probably put an IAC plug on that actually. That's probably a better idea, put an IAC plug on that. But yeah. Rule number one, if you're going to do stupid things in a motor, like put a rag around the pulley or something to try and polish it, make sure you don't get things caught in it. <laughs> oh, I ate it for breakfast. That was nasty. Oh, everything's out of the way. Well, the floor's like, whew, clean floor. Yeah, do be careful doing things like this. 